What's up guys, Big Dummy, Big D Wiz here. It's a stereo receiver by NAD, the 7240PE from around 1991. Basic design here, we're gonna look into this and see what it's all about, so stay tuned. All right, first up, let's take a look at this February 1991 stereo review buying guide. And here we'll uh, check out the cover. Very nice looking old school magazine. Let's check out the receivers and the NAD receivers in particular. You can see 7240PE was the low end model for that year. $479, 40 watts per channel, plus six dB dynamic headroom. So again, the exterior of the receiver is very basic. You can see power button on the left, quarter inch headphone jack, and then there is adjustment for speakers A, B, or A plus B, and also the bass and treble controls. The model of this stereo receiver 7240PE is shown, and the power envelope, we'll get to that later what that's all about. As we pan across the front here, you can see some of the other buttons, the bass EQ, infrasonic filter off, mono, and FM noise reduction off, in addition to tape monitor. The unit only has five AM and five FM tuner presets, which is interesting. There's a selector for CD, phono, tuner, or video modes, a low level button, and also a loudness for boosted bass and treble at lower volumes. There are also a couple of LED lights. You can see green here for FM stereo and soft clipping. We'll talk about soft clipping here in a minute. All right, so now we'll check out the back of the unit. You can see here left and right phono inputs and the ground connection for the phono if you wanna hook up a turntable. There's inputs for CD and video and also a tape in and out and a pre-out and main in in case you wanna send the outputs to a equalizer or some kind of a processor and come back in. Here are the binding post outputs, very good quality. There's A and B binding post connections and a soft clipping switch. Enabling the soft clipping is supposed to level out the clipping of the amplifier and make it so it's not so harsh on the speakers. There are also connections for external antennas, AM and FM, so you can get your talk radio on, and an impedance switch from eight ohms to four ohms. By default, it's set at eight ohms, so we'll leave it there most of the time. And there's a couple of outlets so you can hook up your CD player or tape deck or whatever to the back of this unit. I'm sure many of you guys are like me and want to see what's inside this joker. So take off the six screws on the outside of the enclosure and then we'll lift off the top and check it out here. Now this is after it already been cleaned. So I'm going to reverse here a little bit and go back to when I first got it. You can see all the dust and dirt and everything on the inside. So what I did to clean this off is I turned on my air compressor and um, set it to a lower mode and just went ahead and you know, cleaned it out with some compressed air. Got it much, much cleaner and also got some contact cleaner in there with some of the essential components to make sure everything is uh, in good working and clean order. Some of the interesting things you'll note here on the left, the 80 volt 6800 microfarad high voltage rail capacitors. Also the large power supply on the left. And notice the speaker wires are coming out here. You can't tell by the picture, but they're around 20 gauge. Way too small in my opinion. And in the middle is the heat sink, which is a thin piece of aluminum uh, to keep the transistors nice and cool. There's a couple other things here that I'm gonna show you as well that are interesting. First thing I'll mention is this long rod here, which is for the input connection here and this is where it goes into the switch way on the back of the circuit board and then here are the connections for the speaker wires and I wanted to show you comparison with some 12 gauge OFC wire look how small those speaker wires are very very interesting all right now let's talk about this power envelope what's this all about well you can see here on the specs the amp is rated 40 watts per channel at 8 ohms but check out the dynamic power list 160 watts at 8 ohms, 200 watts at 4 ohms, and 250 at 2 ohms. This amp is designed to deliver large amounts of power and short peaks. You can see here 200 millisecond, it still does 100 watts per channel, but IHF certified it can deliver up to 250 per channel, and that's quite impressive. 
Before we get to the amp dyno test, I wanted to do a quick sound demo of this amp and the Radio Shack Optimus LX5 speakers. I think you'll find they sound pretty impressive. Check this out. All right, first up here with the NAD7240PE. Gonna try out an eight ohm load. It's rated 40 watts per channel. And we're gonna try the test at one kilohertz. Let's see how it does. This is a certified test up to 1% THD. Oh yes, double the rated power, 83 and 80 watts. And don't worry about the voltage there because we're using a DC to AC adapter for the dyno. It's the only thing to take into account here is this. And I don't have the clamp hooked up so we can't see the current pull because I don't have a way to separate out the AC voltage yet. I'll do, we'll do that in the future, but very nice. Double the rated power. Good job, NAD. Let's try it dynamically now, see how it does. It's rated 160 by two, according to the manual. Oh yes. Two seventeen, two oh four. So it does better than it's rated to do. Once again, NAD for the win. All right, this time we're gonna try the NAD at four ohm certified. It's not really rated in the manual anywhere to do the certified run at four ohms, which is up to 1% THD. We're going to try it anyway at one kilohertz. Ninety-two, ninety-six, and 92 watts. So a little bit more than the eight ohm. This is definitely a dynamic amp. Um, not crazy more power than eight ohms. We got 83 and 80 watts. So. Uh, with a consistent sine wave, it, that's not where it shines. It's in the dynamic peaks that we've already seen that it uh, goes crazy. So still pretty good. All right now we're going to run this old school NAD 7240PE do four ohms per channel dynamically at one kilohertz. It says in the manual to do about 200 watts per channel, but we've already seen 200 watts per channel at eight ohms. So I don't know what it'll do. Let's see. Now that, my friends, is some dynamic power. 353 watts and 337 from a 40 watt per channel home audio amplifier. Now that one can handle some dynamic transients for sure. Crazy. All right, guys, this is crazy. Shouldn't even be done. But the receiver here, the NAD from 1989, says it can handle two ohm loads. This is a home receiver. This is not car audio stuff. Most home stuff can't handle loads at two ohms, but uh, this one says it can. So we're gonna do it dynamically at two ohms, both channels loaded. We've got this nice eight gauge Stinger OFC speaker wire. So make sure we get all the current that we need. So let's try the one kilohertz burst test at two ohms per channel. See what it can do. Hold on to your hats. What? It's 
500 watts per channel. That makes this 40 watt receiver, 7240, that is 40 watts RMS at eight ohms, makes it a thousand watt dynamic receiver. Absolutely unreal. NAD for the freaking win. So here's the results of the amp dyno test. You can see we did one kilohertz and also 40 hertz. And the amp just blew me away. I mean, it beat its ratings by like two times at the certified modes. And then the dynamic modes just blew it out of the water. The dynamic rating on this amp and the actual dynamic performance, just incredible from this vintage two channel NAD 7240PE. Thanks as always for watching my videos. Big D Wiz here, oldschoolstereo.com. Make sure you check out patreon.com slash oldschoolstereo. Throw me a couple bucks a month. I'd greatly appreciate it. Help me out. Until next time, Big D Wiz, I'm out of here.